The coaching carousel continues to spin even for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Bill O'Brien is the choice for Ryan Day, handing the keys over as the offensive coordinator, uh, presumed play caller. Tim May is here to break it all down, the 40-year veteran himself. Andy Backstrom, he's here to break it all down as well. I'm Spencer Holbrook, but you already know that by now. And now you know Bill O'Brien is officially going to be the next offensive coordinator at Ohio State, the first man to call plays for this program since uh, 2016, who doesn't carry the name Ryan Day. Uh, Massive shift for Ohio State. Tim, first thoughts as uh, Bill O'Brien's getting ready to become the next offensive coordinator for the Buckeyes. Well, of course, this was popping late last night, and uh, there were pros and there were cons about it. You know, basically, I'm talking about on social media. <clears throat> yeah, he's had a couple of years where you kind of go, well, this I don't know about this guy, but he's had a couple of years where you go, I know about this guy. Here, here's, here's the best way of summing up Bill O'Brien is – I thought he did a miracle job when he took over at Penn State for Joe Paterno and became became the head coach uh, in in that strangest of times. Uh, you know, losing two straight uh, at the end of your season is a tough time. Uh, having what happened at Penn State is a strange time, and uh, he took he picked it up and ran with it. That's the one thing. And uh, they had a hell of a team his second year there, uh, 2012, I think it was. Uh, but the other thing is fellas is the is the coach is considered the goat in uh in in nfl coaching uh, bill belichick hired this guy twice and promoted him up the ranks uh the first time and then went back to him this past year you know bill o'brien wasn't a problem with the new england patriots it was <laughs> the new england patriots and then the the guy who's considered the goat of of college football the greatest of all time nick saban hired him uh as his his offensive coordinator, play caller, uh, et cetera, for two years. Uh, that ought to, that, That's about as ringing an endorsement as you can have, I think, on on your resume as a as a, a college football coach. So uh, I think this guy is the is the real deal. Has he made some blunders play calling wise uh, in the past a few times? Absolutely, but you know, so have a lot of people, right? Uh, bottom line is he's an effective coach. Uh, like I've always told people, and I tweeted a, a guy on the Ohio State staff, uh, tweeted, texted a guy on the Ohio State staff last night. Uh, the main thing you have to get used to with Bill O'Brien, based on that hard knocks he did, they did with the Houston Texans way back when, was the F word is every other word, it seems like, with that guy. So if that makes you squeamish, you know, step back. Uh, but uh, that's my take on him. I think he's a proven top quality head coach who's done it in the NFL and in college football, and uh, you know, as the old saying goes, uh, this is this is about as good as you can get, you know, with, without hiring a guy who's just a big gimmick dude, and uh, and he will demand things from the offensive line room, just like he will demand things from the quarterback. Where it, you know, they haven't quite announced uh, the total shakeup yet of the. We'll get there. Draft. We'll get there. Okay, maybe. We'll well, there. I guess Spencer's going to announce it. No, no. mine is. He is going to have a big role with the quarterbacks. You know that for a fact. Andy? Yeah, I already wrote about this on LettermanRoad.com, but it keeps bringing me back to this one moment before the Cotton Bowl. The day before, we had Eli Drinkwitz and Ryan Day speaking together to the media there in Arlington, and Eli Drinkwitz was asked about giving up play calling before the 2023 season. And he went on for about two minutes talking about how he needed to leave his ego at the door. He needed to embrace the head coaching role, empower other people, let them do their jobs and connect with the coaches better, connect with the players better. And look, Missouri ends up having its first New Year's Six Bowl season, winning that bowl against Ohio State, and having its first 11-win season in nine years. Meanwhile, Ohio State and that offense that Ryan Day's had his fingerprints on since 2017 kind of hits rock bottom in Arlington, scoring three points in that bowl game. And it just felt like you know Ryan Day's been mulling over this move for over a year now. It was before the Georgia game in the CFP – Peach Bowl semifinal that he was already thinking about giving up play calling. Well, now it just felt overdue that this was going to happen. He's been thinking about it, but this was the time in which the transition feels right with a veteran voice. Kevin Wilson not being there was really noticeable this year with the offense. I felt like Brian Day missed that veteran voice in the booth. And Brian Hartline, as great of a recruiter as he is and as great of a wide receivers coach as he is, he had no play calling experience and he had no offensive coordinator experience. I think that's something that this Ohio State team needs and Ryan Day needs if he's going to take the CEO approach. Yeah, I, I spoke about that uh, 
uh, many times, I've spoken about that many times on radio and TV and with you guys, is I was watching Ryan Day while Eli Drinkwitz was saying what he was saying, the epiphany that Eli Drinkwitz had uh, middle of the season that changed everything really for Missouri. And well, changed a lot of things for Missouri. Let's put it that way. And uh, like you said, uh, Andy, uh, the pieces weren't really in place for Ryan to totally step away from it this past year, as we well know, because he elevated uh, Brian Hartline, who hadn't been an offensive coordinator. Um, and then the idea that not only was he going to be an offensive coordinator, but called plays for the first time, the more you thought about it, the more sort of like uh, pie in the sky that seemed for a first-year dude. Uh, I'm talking about uh, with Brian Hartline. But but without a doubt, he's brought on a grizzled veteran now who he not only maybe can trust in the play-calling area and in the possible offensive coordinator area, but uh, a guy that now they can put their heads together. And, you know, now Ryan Day becomes that senior member of the staff who – Bill O'Brien can lean on or who Bill O'Brien will be obliged to lean on if you follow my drift. Cause now I am the head coach, you know, it's going to be interesting. Bill O'Brien was a tight ends coach at Brown in 1993 when Ryan day was still um, probably taking spelling tests. So, I mean, like that tells you how much experience Bill O'Brien has. Um, and the experience at Brown isn't something that somebody will point to and say, wow, this guy's a good coach. But it's something that just reinforces the experience level. Look at Kevin Wilson. You know, he didn't have the most glowing resume of like guys he had worked around or head coaching record. He's just an offensive mind who's been around really brilliant offensive minds. Bill O'Brien's been around offensive minds. The guys that he worked with at Alabama um, with Bryce Young and, and Jamison Williams and, and that cast of characters there in 2021 – in 2022, when Alabama averaged 40 points a game over a two-year period, that was Bill O'Brien's offense. But also, Bill O'Brien was working with good offensive minds. He was working with the greatest college football coach of all time. There was a sponge to be had there. You know, you can sponge some lessons off of Nick Saban as an offensive guy, even if if he's a defensive guy. You know, Bill Belichick, another one of the greatest uh, defensive minds in the history of this sport, a head coach for 20 years, won – uh, six Super Bowls is probably going to go do a little bit of damage with a good roster in Atlanta if he gets hired there. Trusted Bill O'Brien with his offense not once but twice. The the greatest offense in NFL history, 2007 Patriots, that was orchestrated in part by Bill O'Brien. Like This is a guy who understands offensive football. Nobody, nobody thinks Bill O'Brien is perfect. And I don't think anybody should. I don't even think Ryan Day should. But I was told this was a, a home run hire by somebody on the Ohio State staff. That's not because they think he's going to come in and they're going to score 50 points a game with the most creative play calling you'll ever see. It's because Ryan Day knows he's a great offensive mind. And Brian Hartline knows that he's pretty smart when it comes to offense. And Justin Fry has really good run concepts. And then you add somebody who's been doing this for 30 years into that room and you get a, an infusion of new ideas, an infusion of a new voice, a new say in what goes on in that offensive meeting room, a new play caller that has different ideas on down and distance and things to do. Like, I think this is the right move for Ohio State. Do I think it's the sexiest hire? No. They could have thrown $2.5 million to Buffalo at Joe Brady or went and got Alex Van Pelt, who just got fired by the Browns, but I think is a good offensive mind, or went and got Kellen Moore from from. Los Angeles Chargers. But those are all really <laughs> young guys. And I think at this moment in time, Ryan Day needs a veteran, like you said, Tim, the word grizzled, somebody who's been, you know, in the trenches for the last 30 years and knows offensive football. And I think that's exactly what they found here uh, with B.O.B. Yeah. He's a guy who's not afraid to tell you, you know, how the whistle works. Uh, uh it, it, I think it's going to help the offensive line as much as as much as it is anything because some things aren't going to be uh, uh, accepted. I think is the best way of putting it. Tolerate is not the correct term. Accepted, uh, but you know that was an offensive line that was in transition last year anyway. It was always going to be uh, a work in progress, as most offensive lines are. I mean, I know I'm, I'm playing the same fiddle here, but the but the bottom line is he's he is that kind of coach. And the main thing that stands out to me about him, uh, and you just touched on it, is he is that Kevin Wilson-like dude because he's, uh, and you know, he's been a head coach 
in college football and in the NFL, in the NFL. And yeah, uh, things didn't work out totally for with, with the Houston Texans, but they were better with him for a while than they had been. Let's put it that way. And, uh, um, uh, you know, he hired Mike Vrabel away from Ohio state way back in, uh, what the winter of 2014 and stuff. And, uh, so there are all kinds of things about him that people have been attracted to, but I think the main thing he is, is he's, he's pr- he has a proven record, not just, uh, this isn't some pie in the sky. He's going to be good someday. He has been really good many days uh, in his past. And that veteran presence, I think, is going to pay dividends for a team that could really use it that seems primed to jump off the ledge, I mean, ledge in a good way, like a downhill skier, not a, you know, not the Golden Gate Bridge. Hey, Andy, uh, the quarterbacks that Bill O'Brien's worked with, Let's go through the list of teams he's made the playoff with, um, or the college football playoff or the NFL playoff. Well, uh, let's see, Bryce Young, the number one overall pick, uh, national champion and first round pick, uh, Deshaun Watson, um, teams he's went to the playoffs with, uh, Tom Brady. Oh, by the way, Brock Osweiler, Brandon Whedon, and Tom Savage. Um, so if a There's guy, a who's who, Andy, if or a guy, Brandon Whedon. If, if a guy can get Brandon Whedon and Tom Savage and Brock Osweiler to play uh, playoff level football in the National Football League, I, I think that Ryan Day trusts him to get Will Howard in this offense with more talent than they'll see on the field across from them at any point in the year until they play Georgia. Um, I think he trusts Bill O'Brien to get this thing corrected. Yeah, and he made Christian Hackenberg look pretty good at Penn State his first year as a starter there. And that kind of created buzz for Christian Hackenberg to be a high draft pick in the NFL. He wasn't as high as draft pick as people expected, but that's another, you know, clip on the resume for Bill O'Brien. I think that there's mixed opinions of Bill O'Brien for multiple reasons, right? He goes to Penn state and he just takes them out of the grave and he, you know, resurrects that program after Jerry Sandusky's crimes and Joe Paterno, you know, stepping down and he made Penn state relevant again, but then he left Penn state after two years. And I know a lot of Penn state, Penn state fans were upset about that. They felt like he should have stayed longer. Then he goes to the Houston Texans and makes them relevant again, wins four AFC South division titles and gets them to the playoffs, as you just mentioned, Spencer. And, but then he leaves on a bad note in 2020 has a, a terrible season and, and is also the GM and does a lot of boneheaded things as the general manager of that franchise. So then Houston Texans fans don't like him. So there's a lot of things you can point to, very good things he's done, and there's other things you can say, well, that's why fans maybe didn't like him when he left. But overall, when you're looking at this role he's being brought in for, it's offensive coordinator. You know, He might have a big role with the quarterbacks, and he can be that head coach of the offense. They're not asking him to be the general manager. They're not asking him to be the head coach of this football program. They're asking him to be the offensive coordinator, and when you look what he's done best in his career, that's what he's done well. And so I think that that gives you a lot of confidence to Ohio State fan to say, okay, if he's not trying to run this whole thing, we're probably going to avoid some of those big asterisks or you know blemishes on his career that he's had. Yeah, and when you leave it, when we talk about quarterbacks he's worked with or or enhanced, uh, don't forget Matt McGloin. I mean, a former walk-on, you know, who uh, they turned turned into a, a a big-time quarterback over there at Penn State. Didn't win the ultimate games, but uh, that's just an example uh, of his coaching ability. I'm talking about Bill O'Brien. So, uh, yeah, y'all, y'all hit all the nails on the head. You know, it'd be interesting when Ohio State finally uh, makes an announcement on this, uh, what it's going to mean as far as the staff is concerned, because they've got to get on with business now. Uh, I, as, I've talked, as I've talked about a couple of times about this, because you knew this was coming, I even asked uh, Ryan how close he was on Wednesday <laughs> to name it the guy. And, uh, you know, I felt like I was around a ticking time bomb there, but it didn't go off. Uh, but he knew that a lot of us knew that this was coming down. It's just, it just was a matter of when. But now how is the staff going to be shaped is going to be the interesting thing. And, and uh, the other thing that's going to be interesting is Ryan Day is an offensive coach. He's been an offensive coach basically his entire career. He was a quarterback, but uh, especially at Ohio State, his first five years as a head coach, uh, I don't get the – it'll be interesting to hear him explain it because I don't get the idea that he is bringing in Bill O'Brien in the Bill O'Brien offense, if you follow my drift there, much like Nick Saban at Alabama. You want Bill O'Brien to enhance the offense. 
and maybe give it a little bit more of a definition of what it is all about. Uh, but uh, it's still the Ohio State offense, not Bill O'Brien's, you know, scheme driven kind of offense like you would get with some of the offensive coordinators that you might hire out there who'd come in and present a whole new package of like the way you're going to do things, et cetera. This seems more like a keep on keeping on, but fix what's wrong if you follow my drift. And uh, that's where I think Bill O'Brien will really be valuable. To wrap things up for me, I, you know, I'll give you guys final word, but to wrap things up for me, my, my biggest thing here is a lot of people are pointing at the stints with the Patriots and, you know, was the offense really good or did they just have Tom Brady? 2023, the offense wasn't good. Well, guys, I, I, I don't want to talk down to people. And I think that's the, the thing that I, I struggle with the most. It, but hey, no, not with me, you don't. Go ahead now. Yeah, I, I, I would never talk down to the 40 year veteran, Tim May. <laughs> uh, but like, the NFL offenses and college football offenses are so different. And these guys know that like the hashes are different. The way you call plays is different. The way you do things is different. So all of that experience he has with the Patriots, you can cite that, but the offensive output and the offenses with the Patriots, I almost put them to the side. What I look at is two years at Alabama when they, they scored 40 points a game. You know why? Because Bill O'Brien's a smart offensive mind who knows how to manipulate hashes and get people open. And like the, as a college football play caller in today's college football, that's really all you need to do. Like it sounds simple and it's easier said than done, but like manipulate the hashes, get people open. Like, hey, wait a minute. And one more thing. This is, this is important. This is why Will Howard's transfer is important. Uh, Bryce Young could also take a bad call and turn it into a great play. And uh, that's what you have to have. I mean, the ingredients have kind of come together here and you have to have a coach who uh, works that, pardon expression works that into his system is that it can't be just my way or the highway. You've got to give a quarterback like with Matt McGloin, you've got to give him the freedom to, to be the quarterback, not just to be a part of a machine that's supposed to do this. And if it doesn't, we'll come back and fix it. That's what stands out to me about uh, Bill O'Brien's offenses uh, through the years is there is that wiggle room for the quarterback. And you have to have that. Ryan Day knows that. I mean, they, you know, the quarterback they brought in here uh, is that kind of quarterback. He's not Cal McCord. And I think this is a going to be a very nice marriage, for one of another term, uh, of, of of this offseason of what's going on with this Ohio State football team, especially at the quarterback position and at the offensive coordinator position. Andy, final word? Ryan Day's pulling out all the stops. I mean, this offense is his baby. He's had it in his hands since 2017 when he came here and arrived on staff. He's had it even as he was promoted to head coach full time. And now he's finally giving it away a little bit. As Tim said, this is still his offense. He's still going to have a hand in it. He's still going to be involved. But we get the sense this is the changing of the guard in terms of play calling. And this is something that he's probably known he's needed to do for quite a bit. The pieces weren't in place to do it last year. Now they are. And I think you're seeing whether it's this move whether it's bringing in a new quarterback, a splash running back, offensive linemen, uh, the coaching staff changes we've already seen, the coaching staff changes we expect to come. There are a lot of changes happening right now in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, changes that needed to be made because this offense was not just not as good as it has been at Ohio State. It was not even an elite standard nationally. It was 45th nationally in points per game last year with 30.5. Every other year, Ohio State has had Ryan Day. They've scored 40 or more points per game. This offense was not what it has been. It was arguably just about average last year. They needed to be elite again, and that's why all these moves are being made. Yeah, and, and Ryan Day is like any other big-time offensive-minded coach. He judges his offense by touchdowns, by the number of touchdowns it generates. And it doesn't take a genius to just look at, compare – the last couple of years with this past season and see how much that dropped. I mean, uh, you know, if he was, if it was a funds manager at a big time investment bank, uh, you know, he probably would have been shown the door. <laughs> this isn't good enough. Our uh, investors are clamoring for more and he knows that. I mean, it was, you almost got a feeling last year, fellas, I'm telling you this, I'm just middle of the year. There was frustration I mean, you did get that in a sense. There was frustration on Ryan Day's part about the lack of consistent production by the offense against credible defenses. I'm not talking about, you know, 
you know, you know what I mean by that. And even the people listening know what I mean by that. But the, the conversations he seemed to have with his quarterback coming off the field many times in many of those games was, was clear that he was seeing one thing and the quarterback was seeing another, maybe explaining himself, but not, but not getting it done on a consistent basis. Yeah, I know they were six points away. They were an interception away, a bump quarterback away from uh, possibly uh, winning at a uh, Michigan, you know, uh, but it didn't happen. And so Ryan Day, more than anybody else, understood that these big changes need to be made. And this is a big change. I think y'all agree, right? I mean, this is in the Ryan Day coaching career. This is a major moment. It is a major moment for Ohio State, for Ryan Day, and for the Buckeyes offense moving forward. Didn't know we'd get a mention of County Commissioner Matt McLoyne from Lackawanna County, but that's what you get when you come to Letterman Row. You never know what you're going to get. Still popular. He's still popular. Ohio State now has Bill O'Brien as its offense coordinator to help Ryan Day out with that offense, massage the issues that, that happened last year, and see if these Buckeyes can win a national championship. Letterman Row will have it covered every step of the way, just as we did here with Bill O'Brien as the new offensive coordinator at Ohio State. Tim May, the 40-year veteran, he's here to break it down. Andy Backstrom, he's right there to break it down as well. Me, Spencer Holbrook, Alex Kleitman, and Matt Parker on the recruiting side. The Buckeyes getting ready to host a massive recruiting weekend uh, yeah. in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Again, Letterman Row have it all covered. $1 for your first month. We'll see you guys over there at lettermanrow.com.